Hello everyone. So today we are doing uh, another expert talks uh, video and uh, I have with me Anand, Anand uh, Inamdar. Hello Anand. Hi Ravi, nice to be here with you. Yeah, thank you very much Anand. Uh, so Anand is the CEO of uh, a company called uh, Amiboids. I hope Anand, I am uh, pronouncing the name correctly. That's right, it's called Amiboids. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So. Uh, Anand, before we start uh, this uh, session, do you want to maybe spend a couple of minutes explaining about you know what you have been doing? First of all, we would like to know about uh, you, uh, a bit about uh, you know what you have been doing, uh, and especially your experience with the Atlassian ecosystem. And I believe sure. your company is also focused on Atlassian. So maybe if you want to you know uh, tell sure, us sure. more about yourself, that would be awesome. Sure, sure. So uh, my name is Anand Inandar, obviously you've talked about it. Uh, now, I'm a product guy, right? I, I really enjoy developing new products, which solve the real world problems for mm -hmm. the customers. So back six, six and a half years ago, I started Amiboids Technologies along with my couple of friends okay. who are, you know, totally into tech part, right? Mm -hmm. They are hardcore techies. Right. And back then uh, we didn't, I mean, we didn't really have a thought process as to what market we are going to target, what mm -hmm. product we are going to develop. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously before that, while we were working in our corporate jobs, we had been working with Atlassian products, Jira, Confluence, Bitbucket, and so on. Okay. And that is when the idea about developing Atlassian apps came through, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. we already knew how the products worked. Yeah. Now we wanted to experiment and see whether what we develop can become helpful for the teams that are out there. Makes sense. Right? Makes sense. So that's, that's where the uh, Atlassian ecosystem journey started. Initially, obviously we had a little bit of, um, let's say balanced approach wherein we put out a couple of apps on the Atlassian marketplace. We waited the feedback to hmm. pour through, right? And in the meantime, uh, in parallel, we were doing a little bit of consultancy outsourcing kind of work. Obviously, okay. right since the beginning, we wanted to focus on the product, but before you can totally become sustainable on hmm. any one of the software products, you have hmm. to taste the waters, right? So that's yeah. what we were doing. Okay. And a couple of years into it, once we had launched those um, apps on the marketplace, automated release notes being one of them, mm -hmm. we realized that this definitely seems to be resonating with the ecosystem. We had mm -hmm. gotten a bunch of customers. They were really, uh, you know, coming back, back with a lot of requests, right? right. Uh, can your app do this? Can your app do that? Mm -hmm. This really seems to be a great idea. Mm -hmm. What if your app was able to solve this problem and that problem. Right. And that is when we realized now it is possible to become completely sustainable based on the product business itself. And okay. that is when we switched over the entire thought process. We stopped doing the consulting work, the outsourcing work mm -hmm. and totally switched over to the product development part. Now, as of today, uh, mm -hmm. we are a platinum marketplace partner on the Atlassian ecosystem. Okay. Right. Exhibiting higher standards of uh, customer centricity and uh, security as, as, as far as the cloud variants of uh, our apps are concerned. Right. right. Uh, the team size stands at 23. Mm -hmm. The entire team is based out of Pune, India. And okay. like I said earlier, there is no consultancy. We have a bunch of apps on the Atlassian marketplace to be, to be precise, uh, nine as of today, paid okay. apps. Almost all of them doing fairly okay. Some mm -hmm. of them doing really great. Some of them sort of getting into a situation where they should grow mm -hmm. going forward. Mm -hmm. And one or two maybe sort of just didn't click with the customers. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's where we stand as of today. No, we, we don't do any Atlassian consultancy. Everyone is focused solely on doing the product development. Yeah, that is, that is good. And I, I think it is, it is great that you have a, a very clear uh, focus on what you want to do. So being a CEO, do you also, do you still code or uh, you, you're focused on uh, managing the company? 
I mean, I, I majority of my time goes into product management, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. because that's that's the core area that I, that I am interested in. Right. Now, having said that, obviously, you uh, you have to be a generalist. You have to wear mm -hmm. all the hats, be it marketing, be it sales. You you even need to talk to the developers, even if you are not a developer, right? right so right. so I tend to uh, wear all those hats at different points in time, but. Uh, mm -hmm. All in all, the core focus, as far as I'm concerned, is product management. Okay, yeah, that is that is good to know. So I think uh, today we want to uh, understand and uh, look at how your app automated release notes for Jira works. So uh, feel free to share your screen, and I believe you have something to something to show us today about this app. Sure, why not? Yeah. So um, definitely, what what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll share my screen, mm -hmm. but uh, I won't really go into minute details of the app, right? I don't want to turn this into a kind mm -hmm. of product demo. Okay. Right? So I'll I'll stick to the gist of the app, how sure. it works, and you can pose any questions that you have that you think will be useful for your audience. Yeah. Let us do that. Let us do that. Perfect. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen. I've just started sharing. Let me know if you can see it. Yes, yes, um, I can see it now. Okay, all right. So what I've done is I've navigated to the automated release notes screen inside of a Jira project. Okay? All right. Now, one thing to know here, um, we have two screens inside of ARN. One, we call it in-project ARN screen. Okay. And the second one, we call it cross-project ARN screen. The nomenclature itself makes it pretty clear. The right. in-project ARN screen is the one that you're going to access inside of a Jira project. Hmm. And the cross-project ARN screen is something that you access from this apps menu at the top. All right. Okay. That's the cross-project. Sure. Now, as far as the app is concerned, there are two core features of ARN templates and rules, okay? Templates is how you design your release notes document. Mm -hmm. And rules is how you automate the process of release notes generation for a specific version, for a specific project or multiple versions across different projects. All right, right? all right. Now, obviously when I click on create, I'm talking about templates. When I click mm -hmm. on create, I'll be brought to a page where I can design that template. That's the gist of the entire app. Majority of our conversation is going mm. to focus on mm. this area. Right. Now let the page load. What I'll show is um, you can choose these different types of template, the mm. different types of formats. So there is email, there is PDF, there is Confluence, there is JSON, there is HTML, mm -hmm. Markdown, and customer portal announcement for JSM, right? Right, right. Now, Obviously, based on the context, there will be some differences in the template builder. Right. right. For example, in case of Confluence template, you'll have some access to uh, additional macros, which okay. you won't be having in case of an email template. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you're talking about a PDF template, you'll be having some additional configurations that are focused on headers and footers for PDF documents. Okay. Right? All right. So these are the variations. But having said mm -hmm. that, the core of the app still remains what we call this as JQL section, the one that I'm hovering on right now. All right. right? So basically so, using the JQL, I believe you can have some, you know, issues dynamically loaded on this particular uh, release notes. And uh, apart from the template that you, of course you can design and I can see here that you can have your own logo. You can um, have some branding if you want. That's true. So you can, I mean, so, if you have observed already, mm -hmm. there is some static text, right? Mm -hmm. So these are simple strings, right? And there are these variables that are included within those square brackets. Okay, all right. You can foresee this already mm -hmm. that when release notes are generated for a specific version, mm -hmm. these variables get replaced, right? Right. So right. Version name, project name, mm -hmm. release date version description. These are the variables. So okay. we support a bunch of variables that you can access from this variable menu. Mm -hmm. 
will notice you can access username, user email, project ID, release date, timestamp, current date, all sorts of variables that you would find useful when mm. you are designing the release notes template. Yeah, yeah. That's about variables. Mm. Then, like I said, the gist of the matter comes from JQL section. Right. So this static text is obviously going to remain the same in your final release notes document. Mm -hmm. Obviously you can apply different styling. You can, uh, you know, add links and you can do all that kind of stuff, but we are still not talking about Jira issues, how, how they are populated. Mm -hmm. They are populated mm -hmm. based on the JQL section. Right. So if you're looking at this, there are these five JQL sections, stories, mm -hmm. new features, improvements, tasks, and bugs. Now these are available by default, although they look like broken, mm -hmm. they are not broken, mm -hmm. right? That's one of the things that has been there almost since the beginning, but, um, you know, the good thing is people still understand the hmm. core comes from the JQL section, although right. it does not look correct. Hmm. Yeah. Now, yeah. when you click on edit, you'll be brought to the JQL section pop-up, mm -hmm. which is where you configure the entire thing. Hmm. Now, there are three questions the JQL section offers. First question is, what Jira issues should be included in your release notes document? Okay. Right. That's one question. Now, how, mm. how does it get answered? It gets answered based on the GQL that you have configured here. Right. Again, if you notice, this is not a standard GQL. If you just copy and paste this into Jira, it mm. won't work. What we have done is we have tweaked it a little bit to support these variables. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that, you that, have project this, equal yeah. to project ID, mm. version equal to version mm. ID, fixed version equal to version ID. Mm. Right. Mm. And if you notice this JQL, this specific one says, and issue type equal to story. So okay. all it is doing is fetching all issues of type story from a given version for a given project. Okay. Okay. Now that's the one that's first question that got answered, which mm. Jira issues should be included in the release notes document. Mm -hmm. Second question that gets answered here is what data points from those Jira issues should be included in the release notes document, right? All right. And that is configured under the fields tab. All right. So basically you can decide, uh, let us say, you know, do you want to display like 10 fields or three fields? Correct. And uh, I can see here uh, because this looks very intuitive. So I believe you can also, apart from selecting the fields, then comes the next part, like how you want to display it using the layout. Correct, correct. So the third question that I'm mm. going to talk about is about layout. We'll, we'll come to that, but mm. first fields. Now by mm. default, priority key summary status are included, mm -hmm. but obviously that's rarely the situation as far as release notes are concerned. In fact, mm. if you ask me, um, release notes should really be segmented based on the stakeholder persona. Right. Everyone shouldn't get the exact same release notes document because mm. everyone has different agenda, different um, aspirations from your product usage and mm. so on. Right. So this template builder gives you the opportunity to create these different templates for different stakeholders, for different personas. You can even have different templates created for different languages. Right? Oh, okay. That is great. So how you can do that? Obviously you got to use the custom fields feature mm. from Jira itself. So imagine I'm sending one, sending this template out or rather the release notes that are generated based on this template for external customers. Obviously okay. it doesn't make sense to include priority, right? Yeah. Maybe status as well, because the release notes document is supposed to contain all the information for items that are already live. Mm -hmm. So key summary, but even summary is at times not written, keeping in mind the end customer. Right, right, right. Right. So mm. I'll just delete that. Rather, mm. what I'll do is I'll include a couple of custom fields that we ourselves use in our release notes documentation. So you'll see a custom field that I selected called summary for public release notes. Okay. All right. Okay. And there is another field that we use. Just give me a second. I clicked something that I wasn't supposed to. So it went away. <laughs> Let me show you the second field. So description 
for public release notes. Hmm. So what I've done is I've added two custom fields. Now, just imagine if you wanted to generate release notes in two languages, hmm. English and German, what hmm. you'll do, you'll have one custom, one set of custom fields for English language, hmm. the other set of custom fields for German language. And accordingly, you'll map them in different templates inside of ARI. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This, right? Yeah. I think this, this makes sense. I think, uh, and I, I can imagine uh, why you did this because now using these templates, uh, we have this flexibility of uh, selecting different fields. And of course, uh, because it's a template, uh, so you can exactly. of course, you know, configure it based on your projects or based on, as you mentioned, languages. Exactly. Not just that. I mean, um, we ourselves use it to segment the release notes document. What I mean by that is, like I said, customer users are mm -hmm. uh, expecting different mm -hmm. set of data points as compared to your salespeople right. or as compared to your internal scrum development team mm -hmm. or as compared to your customer support team. Mm -hmm. Each one needs different set of data points. Right. So what we do is we have these different custom fields and then we map them to relevant templates. Now, obviously this is one time procedure. Once you have designed the templates, once you're happy with it, everything happens in an mm. automated fashion. We'll talk about the automation in a couple of minutes from now, but here sure. the field selection is happening. You can okay. further customize these fields. For example, in case of the issue key, if you're sending this one out to external customers, it does not make sense to display the issue key as a link, right? So yeah. you can further customize it. You just change mm. it and make it display as text. You can okay. have further configuration by applying custom styling. You can apply custom CSS on specific fields as well. I won't go into that much of detail, mm. but that's the kind of flexibility that's Available. It is good to know that you can do that because I, I know that, you know, my customers always ask me about uh, changing this uh, fields color from uh, gray exactly. to reddish. So that is good <laughs> to know that you can do that. Some inline right. CSS. And, and the third question that we were discussing, right? How, how the final release notes document is going to come out. Hmm. That's defined under layout. If you set it to tabular, which is set by default, Obviously, you can imagine all the fields that you have chosen in the order that you have put them up, you'll get right. them as columns. Okay. Straightforward, nothing complicated. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can apply custom styles to um, control the width of those columns. Okay. But that's the, um, that's the level of customization. Mm -hmm. Higher level of customization is obviously possible in the sequential layout. Okay. Now, when I say sequential layout, I'm essentially referring to a kind of free form template. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is we have chosen the fields that we want to be included in the final release notes document. Now mm -hmm. I can structure them the way I want, right? All right. So Maybe. Like, yeah. So, go on. so it's like uh, another template within a template. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So what you do is let's say you want uh, maybe bullets for each one of the items that are included in the release, right? So you say key summary, I'm just giving you an example. I'm not including the actual custom field that we have chosen. Mm -hmm. You'll get the error invalid va variable because we are not, we have not included the summary field. We have okay. included a custom field, but you can just copy paste the variables and you'll get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say I wanted to change this a little bit. Maybe I wanted key in the first um, first row and then have the summary indented in the second row. All right. All right. right? So you can do all these sorts of them. You can mm. make the key uh, bold, italic. You can have it in a different font size, in a different font and so on. So there okay. is no restriction as to what you can do. This is a WYSIWYG editor, right? So you can mm. do almost anything that you would want. And the same structure, the same pattern is followed for all the issues that are returned by the given JQL. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. Right? Okay. So that's the gist of JQL section. Now within a given template, you can insert as many JQL sections as you want okay. or as little as you want. In hmm. fact, if you look at this, there is this group by possibility. Okay. What it does is 
on the back of the screen you should see these five jql sections stories new features improvements tasks bugs right right, right. in fact what you can do is you can put up a jql without any issue type clause mm -hmm. and then group by issue type you yeah. get the exact same result right 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 yeah this makes sense if if you don't really need a specific uh, layout for all those different you can just have one correct correct okay so that's the level of flexibility that's on offer any questions surrounding the jql section uh, no it looks quite straightforward to me i mean at least for me because i uh, i know how jql works and right. i can also um, see myself using it easily without uh, looking in the documentation i think correct. if your app is easy enough intuitive then i think uh, uh, that is where uh, uh, the, the, that is from uh, where the value comes of using the app if i can do it myself right right now there is obviously stats that i can talk about but i'll mm. skip that part and i'll talk about the actual release notes generation right okay. now template obviously you can just preview it just to mm. ensure that it's working as expected when you preview it depending on number of version variables that you have utilized in your jql sections Hmm. system will ask of you which versions do you want to generate the release notes for okay right that's for preview but the automation part really happens under rules now let me show you an existing rule that i have in place rules is how you trigger the automation okay right. Right. so what's going to happen is you name the rule and then you define the trigger hmm. whether you want it to be triggered manually or when a version is created in the given mm. project or when mm. a version is marked as released in the mm. given project or scheduled before end days of release right so one of the uh, more common use cases that we come across this is for internal pre release intimation yeah, for scrum yeah. team right yeah. so what what you do is you say i want to intimate my team 4 days before next release mm -hmm. right so the template ideally should talk about we we have a release 4 days from now and as of today the status is of item stands at this right then the manager or the relevant people can mobilize the resources and ensure either the scope is changed or additional resources are all allocated to get the thing completed okay okay yeah then yeah. you also have this scheduled at interval mm -hmm. now this one is interesting if you have looked at it manual one when you try and run a manual version right so let me just show you that this is a manual rule when i click on this run button which is also available from the listing it will right. ask me the version input for which version i want to generate the release notes right so the version mm. is coming in as an input okay. same goes for version created mm. when you have a version created in the given project automated release notes already knows what version was created mm. same goes for version release same goes for scheduled before end days of release you are still right. talking about versions but right. now scheduled at interval this one is not going to pass any version variable right okay now the intention of including this trigger is to make the app more flexible hmm. given the use of jql given the flexibility of jql you can in fact include a jql that is version agnostic Right? right so imagine you have a, a weekly status report right which is supposed to include um, all the critical bugs that were um, reported by the qa team okay in the last week or so right mm -hmm. what you will do you will simply have a jql section and your jql section will say issue type equal to bug priority equal to critical mm -hmm. and created greater than minus 7 days okay right now you can have this configured to run every monday morning 9 o'clock hmm. or whenever you have that internal meeting set up right right what right. it will do is it will send out or it will trigger this rule hmm. on on that frequency send out the relevant information and you can conduct the meeting so there is this reporting stuff which is hmm. not really focused on release notes hmm. that is possible based on the flexibility of jql sections okay okay yeah and, and yeah this this makes sense and then finally you have webhook 
okay. what the webhook uh, trigger does once you save it it will spit out an endpoint a url mm -hmm. to which you can pass the version identifiers right. so imagine if you have a ci cd tool in place mm -hmm. right maybe you want to um, trigger this rule automated release notes rule once the build is deployed on production environment yeah what do yeah. you do you modify the deployment script in jenkins mm. and team mm. city or whatever tool you are using and mm. you call this webhook url by passing along the version identifier the mm. rule gets triggered everyone mm. who is supposed to get notified via the arn actions get notified yeah this was uh, triggers this was triggers yeah go on yeah i guess uh, this uh, webhooks uh, part is probably my favorite so far <laughs> Because I can imagine, uh, you know, uh, this unique URL and uh, when you have this ability to trigger the rule and generate the release notes uh, uh, from elsewhere, then I think uh, that would be wonderful. And uh, and I, I can imagine uh, that many people may want to do it. It's true, it's true. We have seen quite complex setups. I mean, hmm. people can uh, automate almost the entire DevOps cycle, but hmm. rarely they do think about um automating the release notes process right 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 so that's where this comes in now that yeah. was about triggers hmm. we still haven't talked about the actual actions hmm. now let me show you how the email action would work you have designed an email template just choose one of the email templates that you have designed inside of the project okay. or outside of the project if you have a global template right, right. so you choose you choose an email template mm -hmm. Then you decide whether the release notes email should also include a PDF attachment, markdown attachment, JSON, HTML, whatever makes sense. Mm -hmm. If you don't want that, want that, it's mm -hmm. okay. You can just keep that empty. Okay. Then you have a reply to address. Obviously, say um, this is being sent by the product manager, right? Mm -hmm. So what they'll do is they'll set the reply to address as product at amiboids.com. So if someone replies to the release note, mm -hmm. it comes in my inbox so that I can have a conversation with the individual or the team what they are looking for as far as this current release notes are concerned okay. now additionally you can also decide what email do you want to send this email from and this is available only in the cloud variant because the cloud apps or the cloud jira instance does not allow access to its email queue for apps okay right? hmm. so by default you can send the release notes via our email address which is auto release notes at amiboids.com but you can configure your own smtp and utilize that for sending out release notes okay yeah i think that would be um, useful yeah that that definitely helps mm. because people want to have their own branding in place exactly. even if exactly. that is for a mm. tiny bit of release notes and then who should be receiving these release notes Obviously, you can choose the Jira users, you can choose the project roles, you can choose the Jira groups, mm -hmm. you can choose the issue level users. Right. Okay. And you can choose the email addresses. Okay. And so you can configure any one of these and the release notes email goes out to these mm -hmm. configured users. Right. And, and one question about uh, this email action. Uh, yes. Do, do we have any uh, limit uh, on like number of emails you can send like are we talking about uh i'm sh i'm sure you may not want to send it to like uh thousands of users but uh, is there a limit that is imposed by the app or cloud so we we will we limit the total number of emails to a hundred at a time okay okay having said that we are actively considering uh you know imposing usage of your own smtp hmm when you're trying to send it to more than 20, 50 users, that's okay. still um, work in progress. We are still thinking it out how it would work, but uh, 100 is the limit that we have today. All right. Okay. Now, depending on the context, which action you are trying to configure, the um, attributes will change. For example, in case of Confluence, mm -hmm. obviously you'll have to choose uh, what Confluence template do you want to use, right? Which space key do you want to create a page in now when it comes to confluence there is very interesting um, stuff that is related to page action you can not only create a new page hmm. using arn you can update the 
existing pages. You can prepend and append to existing release notes pages. Okay. So using that, you can create a running release notes document that mm. houses the recent release notes at the top also includes uh, the table of contents right. so that you can easily navigate to mm. different mm. versions of release notes and so on. Yeah, this is something that uh, uh, I've done in the past uh, for my clients. But right. of course, uh, I I used uh, a script to do it. And of course, you know, when, when you talk about scripts, uh, it is difficult to maintain. But And it is good to know that you can uh, configure it here that you want to maybe add to an existing page or create a new one from scratch. So definitely, uh, it looks useful. That's true. That's true. And then obviously you have post action, widget action, release page action. I mm. won't really go into the details of all of these because mm. it, it's, it's going to take time, but the entire idea is whatever different channels you can think of as far as release notes communication is concerned, mm. we are trying to support all of them via ARN. I, I right. want to specially mention release pages and widgets, which are available only on the cloud variant okay. release pages and widgets are um, release pages are standalone release notes pages, mm -hmm. which are hosted at our end. Okay. And widgets are exactly these. So I just clicked on this button here. Let it load. I, my Mac is misbehaving <laughs> a bit today. So it's taking time, but you'll notice the widget has loaded. Right. This is right. actually getting served from our ARN cloud instance. Okay. So the release notes are populated. Right. And mm. you just have to insert the JavaScript snippet inside of your web or mobile apps. Okay. And the release notes widget appears right mm. in here. Okay. Yeah. That, that is uh, interesting because uh, uh, many people use a similar widget for uh, Jira service management uh, based projects to reach out to customers. But I can also uh, find a use for this widget to communicate or to tell your customers about, you know, any new updates that you may have. Definitely, definitely. And there is a lot more that's coming as far as these widgets and release pages are concerned. Mm -hmm. They have been uh, one of the most popular channels as mm -hmm. far as the cloud version of the app is concerned. So we are actively working on uh, improving them based on customer feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So, so any questions? I mean, yeah, so you that's, mentioned that that's, that's the core of the app. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks good. It looks great. And uh, I do have a few questions. So uh, now we are talking about, of course, you know, automated release notes and uh, what you showed me is on cloud, but I guess you also have a similar version on server. And you mentioned that, you know, there are some features which are either different or not there on, uh, on server version. So do you want to maybe quickly uh, sure, sure. tell me about the, those differences? Right. So uh, there's not much of a difference, actually. The only difference lies here. Release pages and widgets are okay. available only for the cloud variant. And second difference is um, the SMTP. Hmm. SMTP setup is available only for the cloud variant because in case of on-prem Jira, hmm. it does give you access, when I say you, the app access to the email queue so right. that release notes emails are directly going out via Jira's email address. Yeah, 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 I so understand. That's the, these are the only two differences. Mm, okay, and talking about, uh, I mean, because uh, you were showing confidence. Uh, so let us say if I'm using this app on uh, cloud and um, I also have a cloud instance of confidence. So mm -hmm. I, I guess uh, this connection, this integration will work or will rely on the application links, right? Of Jira and Confluence? Uh, no, no, no. You have to configure this um, as Jira administrator. Okay. There is a separate configuration panel where you have to configure it using mm -hmm. um, your API token okay. and email address. All right, all right. So basically, I, I guess uh, talking about technical terms, I think uh, it's using the REST API, I guess. That's right. The reason being, um, we have some customers who have completely weird setup, right? They mm. have Jira on cloud, Confluence mm. on server. Mm. So these are the different kinds of setups we wanted to avoid as far as application links is concerned. So we kept mm. it simple. You just have the direct REST API integration. You right. provide the credentials, which are stored um, mm. in an encrypted fashion. Right. And you can utilize the app. Okay, 
yeah that is that is good to know and um if if i want to use it i let us say i, I have my own free version of jira cloud C can i use your app uh, do you have like a uh, oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, um, irrespective of whether you have a free version of Jira or mm. a paid version of Jira, mm. as far as cloud is concerned, we do have a free variant of automated release notes. Okay. Right. So we wanted to give back to the community, given that um, a lot of these ideas have come from the community mm. itself. Mm. Right. Mm. So mm. what the free version does. It offers the exact same features. There are no differences whatsoever. The okay. only difference lies between number of automated executions. Oh, okay. In the in the free version, the number of automated executions mm. are limited at five per month. Okay. Okay. But having said that, you can still utilize the templates by previewing them. Mm. So, just just imagine what do you have out of the box in Jira, the mm. release note feature I'm talking about. You have a simple template that you cannot mm. change pretty much. And mm. you have to copy the release notes content and paste it somewhere else. Right. Now, if you don't want to pay for release notes generation, that's okay. And if you're on cloud, just mm. install the free app. Mm. Don't worry about the automation, mm. create the templates. There is no restriction. What kind of templates you can create, okay. right? Similar to how you were copy pasting in Jira, hmm. just copy paste the content using template previews in the free version. Okay. The benefit you are getting is the templates are completely flexible. Hmm. You can design hmm. them the way you want, which is right. not the case with default out of the box feature in Jira. Good, good, good. Yeah, that is, that is great. I think uh, what I'll do and uh, what I normally also do uh, whenever I have uh, free time or whenever I encounter a new app on the marketplace, I try mm -hmm. it and I install it and I try to use it myself. Uh, I will now definitely uh, install the free version of automated release notes and I will play with it and I will uh, try to use it as well for my uh, for, for my project for maybe if I'm to if, if I'm trying to convey a message in, in the form of a release note. So I'll also give it a try. But uh, I believe you mentioned in the beginning when we were talking that because mm -hmm. you you started working on this app, uh, automated leaf notes uh, based on uh, the problems that you wanted to solve. Right. And uh, you're trying to evolve this app with new features and you're trying to, of course, you know, bring in new things. But do you have any plans to add more features? Or do you have a roadmap, any public roadmap that uh, you, you oh, know? Oh, we, we do have a public roadmap that's available mm. uh, with, whose link is available right from within the app itself. Right. And uh, we have a bunch of engaged customers who, you know, sort of come back to us asking for different features. Mm. As far as um, the exciting features are concerned, I think I'm, I'm pretty stoked about the subscription feature that's coming along for mm. release pages. Mm. Right. Similar to status page, you right. have a release page where you go in, subscribe, and then you start receiving those emails as and when there is a new release. Right. right. That's something that, that uh, we have been actively working on. Additionally, we are also expanding the scope of the app right now, mm. although it, um, it talks about automated release notes, right? Mm. The name says mm. automated release notes. Like I mentioned, the power of JQL makes it possible to use it for hundred different things. Mm. In fact, uh, one of the community leaders, Fabian Lopez, right? Yep. He wrote a couple of articles in the Atlassian community saying he generates 18 reports hmm. in a single click using automated release notes. Even we did not know that <laughs> these were the possibilities, right? Hmm. So what we are doing is we are trying to broaden the scope of the app by allowing additional bit of reporting okay. within this. So there are going to be some graphs and charts that are generated on the fly, similar to JQL section. And that, those you can include in your uh, release notes document or reports. This is actually just to share with you um, that this is actually one of the um, mostly asked question, not only on the community, but also people ask me directly, how can we send, uh, send regular e emails with uh, some reports? So we right. have plans to bring those features, then that would be awesome. I'll, I'll definitely uh, keep an eye on, on this app now. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Anand, for your time. I think this uh, session was uh, 
really useful. I learned a lot. And my plan is to now uh, give your app a try. I'll definitely use the free version for uh, for my own personal use. And uh, I will definitely uh, share uh, my feedback with all of my subscribers. Normally what I do, I try to uh, play with the apps and I also make mm-hmm. a video so that, uh, you know, people who are trying to do something with Jira, people, you right. know, patients, right. uh, uh, they want to maybe uh, solve a problem, but they're not really sure. Mm-hmm. So I, I basically make a video on those uh, apps to share with everyone. So I, I'll definitely do that. And uh, and once again, thank you. Thank you very much for your time today. Awesome. Awesome. It was good to be here. Thank you for those insightful questions. And I'm looking forward to your feedback as well as the video that you are going to create for automated release notes. I will do. Thank that. you. Thank you once again. Thank you everyone.